Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a Money Monday edition here on Liquid Lunch. I'm Fernando Uribe, your favorite professor and broadcast journalist, filling in for the great John Tabak. He'll be back on Liquid Lunch later this week. Uh, we're going live here until 2 p.m. via Biz TV. Don't forget to like Liquid Lunch on Facebook. And of course, follow it on Instagram and Twitter. And some news today, folks, here. And as you can see, a new study uh, is showing that people who are asymptomatic can indeed not, I repeat, not transmit COVID. And that's been perhaps one of the biggest misconceptions going on right now as it pertains to COVID spreads, whether it be in very congested areas like where I live here in New Jersey or across the river in New York or New York State, New York City, or even across the country. And certainly when we, now again, we have to sort of always be a little skeptical about studies per se, but when we see studies like this come out, it sort of reassures us about the idea that many of us don't want to fall into panic mode, which is what's been going on because of COVID-19. And, let, and folks, let me be very clear once again, because I don't want to sort of minimize it in any way. You know, listen, this year we've lost family and friends, colleagues, neighbors. Uh, we've seen businesses close down forever. Uh, we've seen economies uh, going into just the deep end uh, because of COVID-19 and more so. Uh, how governors and mayors in these cities and states uh, have been governing, and that certainly has been not conducive to a healthy economic environment. But for the most part, also, it's the idea about how we're supposed to be engaging in, in the public arena and also about issues concerning public health. And again, when you're seeing a study like this, uh, where it shows that asymptomatic people cannot transmit the virus, uh, A, I mean, I'm happy to see that and certainly I'm relieved. And B, it should give us, a, a, I think, a little bit more um, of a reassurance that the panic that has been put forth by many of our governors and mayors and even members of the liberal media, which really want to scare us into submission. Let's be honest, this is all about submission on their end and trying to make us as submissive as we possibly can uh, to government, to make us completely reliant on government. And that's not the job of government. The job of government is to serve the people. It's not the other way around. And certainly we're seeing that, for example, in, in the stark contrast that exists. And I talked about it in my, in my previous segment. Uh, I was in Florida not too long ago. And when you see the way the Sunshine State is governed as opposed to the Golden State of California or the Empire State of New York or the Garden State of New Jersey, it's night and day, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we're seeing just better governing. And as a result, we're seeing the state in a much better shape, again, economically and you know sociologically as well. And that, for me, listen, as an academic, that matters to me. Seeing good policy being put forth, seeing good policy uh, being put into effect. OK, where it's the idea that, you know what, restaurants should be operating at 50 percent capacity. Well, guess what? That's why restaurants and other small businesses in New Jersey, excuse me, in the state of Florida are thriving a hell of a lot more than they are in New York and in New Jersey. Now, again, here in New Jersey, what drives me crazy, and I've contacted the Department of Health to come on my own show, Real Talk with Fernandi Rebe via Eyes and NJ, to, for someone in Trenton to tell me, well, why are you still giving Governor Murphy faulty intelligence? or faulty data, when we all know that if you open restaurants and other small businesses up to 50% capacity, you're not going to engage in some sort of super spreader event. But for whatever reason, I mean, they're being, um, it's not even cautious folks. I think I think they're just being cowardly here. I think I'm not trying to minimize the impact of COVID because we all know how catastrophic it's been with hundreds of thousands of people losing their lives this year. Again, I'm not trying to minimize it, but what we can't do is allow our governors and our mayors, okay, to minimize our economies and how so many small businesses, folks, listen, as, as someone who has frequented nightlife in New York City for as long as I can remember, going back into my late teens, seeing iconic institutions close down forever because Governor Andrew Cuomo, who's too busy going on his, uh, you know, Brother Fredo's, excuse me, Chris's show on that garbage news network called CNN and winning Emmys for I don't know why, because of his COVID pressings. He seems to be more concerned about that or you know, his new book, then worrying about the economy in the state of New York and the city of New York. And guess what? People are openly defying them. And I think that's what's going on right now. And more so, as I said, just to start the segment, this study speaks for itself. It speaks volumes about a lot of the misconceptions that the liberal media has been trying to push on us. And again, when you look at states like Florida and Texas, who are governed infinitely better, okay, than the blue states that I just named. And of course, I know many people on social media will just say, well, Fernando, if you like it so much there, why don't you move there? That's not the point. The point is you want to raise awareness 
about bad governance. And that's what's going on in New Jersey, where I live right here, across the river in New York State, and even all the way out west, 3,000 miles away out in the Golden State of California. Folks, it's these blue governors that are destroying these economies. And then they have the audacity to go ask the federal government for bailout money. So you're running your, your state into the ground, but yet you want the federal government to bail you out. It's almost like, you know what, when you give kids a credit card for the very first time, right? Let's say they're in college and they spend over their limit. Somehow they want their parents to come to the rescue. Well, that's what these blue governors look like. And I don't know why it's so difficult for anyone to process that. But of course, when you say something like that, oh, you're just sort of, you know, a crazy conservative. No, I'm not, I'm not being a crazy conservative. I'm actually being a realist, I'm being a pragmatist. And that's how we're looking at how poorly these states are run. So again, when I see this new study come out, I'm excited to see it. I'm relieved that this type of information is finally getting out there because you know what folks, instead of pushing panic, we should be pushing data and pushing science, not crazy science or scary science, but you know what? Realistic science. And that, that's very much needed right now, folks, in our political and economic climate, because God knows we need a breath of fresh air when it comes to how to deal with COVID as we close out 2020 and certainly going into 2021. Folks, we have great guests here coming up. We're on live until 2 p.m. right here on Biz TV. I'm Fernando Uribe filling in for the great John Tobacco right here on a Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch. We'll be right back right after this. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry. Well, everyone, again, sort of a premature break. I wasn't, I, I didn't really get the, um, the uh, notification there and uh, I probably wasn't hearing correctly. So folks, again, uh, we do have coming up uh, in our next segment, Joe Pinion. Uh, he is a very uh, reputable Republican strategist and a philanthropist. So it'll be great to talk to him uh, in the next segment. But folks, again, just as a reminder here, as we're um, you know on live until 2 p.m., folks, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. And certainly, as I just alluded to in the previous segment, you know what? It's important to spend time with family, not just obviously during the Christmas season, but going up into New Year's. And I and I get it that many of in the liberal media, and I get it that many, um, whether it be in government or in science and medicine, are trying to scare us once again into not spending time with family. Folks, don't fall for it. Be careful. Be judicious. Take the precautions you need to. All right, but don't for any reason miss out on spending any time with family and friends. You don't know what could happen in the next month or two, or even a year from now. Folks, trust me, a year ago at this time, I had a very different feeling how, how my life was going to be. And I know many of you probably felt the same way, but you know what? If you could spend time with family, spend it with possible, have a few laughs, have a few drinks, you know, chuckle, watch a couple of ball games, you know, NFL, you know, NFL playoffs are coming up, NBA season's back, hockey returns, do whatever you can to spend time with loved ones, folks. Don't fall for the panic that many in the liberal media are trying to push on you. And even to some extent, even Dr. Fauci, who I know many hold in high regard, but many others don't. And again, I don't want to sort of, be, you know, I'm, I'm actually trying to be put on the spot here as to where I feel about Dr. Fauci, but I'm really not listening to him too much. And you know what? Many other Americans aren't either because we're going to live our lives the way we feel we have to. And the best person to live my life is myself. And I know many of you will agree. And I know that's why many of you tune in every day here to Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. And of course, you know the message that John Tobacco has been putting out there for, for, for months now, okay? You know the message that John Tobacco has been putting out there when he's been going to Max Public House or he's been speaking uh, at rallies in front of City Hall denouncing uh, Mayor de Blasio and the atrocious governance that he's engaged in or the just the downright garbage governance that Andrew Cuomo is engaged in and who, he's, and who both of these guys are trying to scapegoat and who they're trying to ruin. It's despicable. And again, you know, it's up to us folks to, to, to open our eyes, to stay awake, not woke, but to stay awake and find out, you know, what, what, can we, what can we do to spread a positive message, to spread a, a message of awareness, to make sure that, you know what, we're not caving to government, that we're not going to be submissive to them. Because again, folks, at the end of the day, isn't it, isn't it government who works for us? It's not the other way around. And that's something we should all keep an eye out for, folks, as we go into 2021. And I know that John will be talking about this repeatedly every single day here on the program and keep being that advocate for every single person that knows that, you know what, yes, we have to take COVID seriously, but we have to take more seriously is our own mental health and our own, just our own lives, because no one's going to do it for us. Government 
to take care of us, you know, we're for a really, really rude awakening. Well, folks, again, um, you know what? We have a great guest coming up here, Joe Pinion, coming up in just a moment right here. We'll be right back on a Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch. I'm Fernando Rebe, filling in for John Tobacco here on Biz TV. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> 